Hello, and welcome to Market Hall Museum in Warwick for the fifth in the series of short promotional films looking at the exhibition Healy, Cars for Speed and Glamour. Now, this particular um, short film is going to focus on motorsport, which is certainly a very exciting part of the story and a very important part of the story because Donald Healy recognised how important it was to promote his cars through excelling in motorsport. And they certainly appeared in, a, in, a, in a, a quite a big range of, of different kinds of motorsport activity from uh, endurance events such as uh, Le Mans, the Le Mans 24 hour race, uh, land speed records uh, and also rallying. So we'll be having a look at some of those events and some of the characters that they encountered along the way. Donald Teeley was allowed to leave school early to become an apprentice at the Sopwith factory in Kingston-on-Thames. They used to test planes at the famous Brooklyn's racetrack, and so Donald Teeley would have been exposed to the world of fast motor car racing. Between the wars, he opened his first garage in Perrinporth, which also doubled as a chauffeuring business. The success of the firm enabled him to develop his interest in motorsport, he used the garage to prepare cars for racing. His first recorded competition was a third place finish in the Truro and District Motor Club trial in 1922. He competed in many of these speed trials, including the more ambitious Land's End to John O'Groats trial, winning gold medals on several occasions. Perhaps Donald Tilly's greatest success as a driver was winning the Monte Carlo Rally in 1931. As previously mentioned in an earlier posting, we have a copy of the programme from a special celebratory dinner held in Perrinporth, where Healy received a special trophy from the Automobile Club of Monaco, given for three podium finishes. Healy was becoming quite famous because of his rallying success. On one occasion, James Bond writer Ian Fleming was his navigator when working as a journalist to cover the Alpine trial events that Healy was competing in. At this stage, of course, Donald Teeley was competing in cars from other constructors. Aerials, Invictors, Triumphs, Rileys. He eventually moved to the Midlands to work for Triumph, and his experience as a rally driver certainly helped with the development of some of Triumph's models at this time. Once Healy had started his own company after the war, it was inevitable that his cars would be tested in motorsport competition. He always understood the importance of publicity for selling his cars, as well as the benefits of rigorous testing within a racing environment. A Healy car was, after all, about speed as well as glamour. Most of the early models were fine-tuned for racing at the Cape Works. The Westland and the Elliott were mainly used in rallying. As well as the Monte Carlo rally, they appeared at other com competitions such as the Alpine Rally, the Targa Florio, and a particular favourite, the Mille Amelia. The Mille Amelia was a tough open road endurance race from Brescia to Rome and back. As the name suggests, it lasted a thousand miles. Donald Tilly continued to compete in rallying at this point, and right through the 40s and into the early 50s, he continued to race. Geoffrey Healy also competed in rallying events mostly the Mille Amelia, and mostly with his father. On one occasion in 1952, their Nash Healy hit a bridge and the pair had to kick out the doors to escape the hissing car. According to Geoffrey, they eventually decided to give up driving together on accountant's advice that a serious accident to the pair of them could wipe out the family business. Of the early Warwick Healys, the Healy Silverstone, introduced in 1948, was perhaps the most successful at racing. The light-bodied car was ideal for competition. Indeed, it looked more like a racing car than one for the road. Donald Teeley managed to record a class win in the car at the Alpine Rally in 1949. The famous American driver Briggs Cunningham acquired some to race in the States with a Cadillac engine, which he did to great success.
Donald Teeley was also attracted by the challenge of using his cars to compete in the famous Le Mans 24-hour race. He sent a team to this event on 18 different occasions. The restored 1950 Nash Healy, known as the X5, visited Warwick Museum as part of the launch of the exhibition in 2021. The Nash Healy's were probably Donald Tilly's most successful cars at Le Mans. A car driven by Lance Johnson and Tommy Wisdom finished first in class and third overall in 1952. However, in 1955, an Austin Healy driven by Lance Macklin was involved in the collision with the Mercedes that led to the death of the Mercedes driver and killed over 80 spectators, making it the worst incident in motor racing history. The Healy involved in this crash still exists and has changed hands for huge amounts of money. In the archive, we hold a report by Geoffrey Healy authenticating the car, which he surveyed back at his home in Barford in the 1990s. The Healy's did not compete at Le Mans again after this incident for several years. From 1968 to 1970, they entered cars especially designed for the event, as well as some works cars. These specials were known as the SR and XR37, but I shall say more about these in the last post of this series when we look at the site at Coton End. Another famous endurance race favoured by the Healy's was the 12 Hours of Sebring. This race is held in an abandoned World War II airbase in Florida. Healy sent whole teams of big Healy's, the 100s and 3000s, and Sprites to compete in Florida through most of the 50s and 60s. His great friend Sterling Moss raced for the team on several occasions and in 1962 the team also included movie star and racing enthusiast Steve McQueen. In the museum exhibition we have displayed an example of one of the charts plotting the progress of the Austin Healy's as well as other competitors in the race in 1955. <laughs> Another area of motorsport competition that interested Donald Healy was that of setting land speed and endurance records. Not long after the Healy Elliott was launched, Healy undertook a number of speed tests in Belgium that allowed him to lay claim to the Elliott being the fastest production car on the road with speeds of over 110 miles an hour. So when the partnership with Austin was formed in 1952, Healy was keen to test the new 100 at the home of land speed records, the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. Most people are familiar with a car being timed over a certain distance to record a speed record, but in fact there were a whole series of records to be attempted based on the type of car, the distance run, whether a flying or standing start, and the course used. There were records for the 14 mile straightaway course and for a circular course where teams of drivers would be timed for different time periods up to 24 hours. Donald Tilly would take an experienced team of drivers with him including George Easton famous for breaking the land speed record in the 1930s and actor Jackie Cooper. The first stock cars that performed at Bonneville looked like Austin Healey 100s in appearance for later trips, a streamliner was taken. This was essentially a specially prepared 100 with a Jerry Coker design body that made them look more like the sort of cars that people associate with land speed record attempts. Healy's team made three trips to Bonneville between 1953 and 1956 and set a large number of series records. Perhaps Donald Tilly's greatest achievement at Bonneville was joining the 200 miles per hour club, a long held ambition. He described how the support cars travelling well over 100 miles an hour appeared to be going backwards. The Bonneville trips helped to increase Healy's celebrity in the US and the timing was convenient with the launch of the 106 in 1956. Through the 50s and 60s, 
all of the Austin Healy 100s, the 3000s and the Austin Healy Sprite were frequent competitors on the international rally scene. The preparation of the cars for these events was largely managed by BMC's competition department led by Marcus Chambers at the Abington Works in Oxfordshire. Cars could come straight off the production line and straight into the works to be converted into rally cars. Many famous rally drivers of this era competed in them, including Paddy Hopkirk, John Sprintzel, Timo Mitmakinen and Rauno Altonen. Particularly successful was the Austin Healey 3000. It had a reputation for being hot and noisy and tricky to handle. Despite this, it achieved great success, including outright victories in several rallies. This included a win in the gruelling Liège-Rome-Liège rally in 1960 with the all-female pairing of driver Pat Moss and navigator Anne Wisdom. Pat was the sister of Sterling Moss and Anne the daughter of long-time Healy collaborator Tommy Wisdom. A double victory for a 3000 occurred in 1961 and 1962 when the Morley twins won the Alpine Rally with Paddy Hopkirk and Henry Lydon winning the event in 1964. The same year, Rauno Altanon and Tony Ambrose won the spa Sofia liege rally. Together with a number of Sprite victories, this was truly a golden age of competition for the Austin Heelys. By the late 1960s, the big Heelys were phased out of rallying competition due to new regulations and the emergence of new rally stars like the Mini Cooper and other faster models. For many years, however, Austin Healey cars have continued to compete at local and vintage rally events, and the Mille Amelia, now staged for vintage cars, regularly features some of the old Warwick Healeys. The breadth of Healey participation in a wide range of motorsport activity over 25 years for what was essentially a small company, was truly staggering and certainly has played a part in cementing Donald Healy's legend in the history of British motoring. In the last part, we will look at a site fondly remembered by many older Warwick residents. That is Coatenend. So see you again. <laughs>